Hi, I'm Tecumseh Fitch, and welcome to Bioacoustics 101. In this series of mini lectures, we're going to explain the basic concepts of voice science and bioacoustics in terms that anybody can understand. And now we're going to talk about vowels. So first you should learn about formants. We talked about formants in another lecture, in another mini lecture, um, but I'll just remind you, formant frequencies correspond to the frequencies that the air inside of the vocal tract, so inside of my mouth and throat, there's air, and when it vibrates, it vibrates at certain frequencies, and those are called formant frequencies. And formants act like windows that let certain frequencies come through and other frequencies don't pass through. And last time I used the example of a tube of air, so there's nothing inside of this tube except air, but when I whap it like that, this air vibrates nonetheless, and the rate at which it vibrates, it actually vibrates at multiple different frequencies, are called the formant frequencies. Okay, so that's in the formant frequency lecture. Now we're going to talk about vowels. So what am I doing when I go, I, yo. Okay, the obvious thing that I'm doing is I'm moving my lips and I'm moving my tongue around in my mouth. But what that does is it changes the shape of the vocal tract in such a way that the formant frequencies change their frequency. So the formant frequencies move around. And crucially, there's not just one formant frequency. So there's only one fundamental frequency. That's what controls the pitch. But for formants, there are multiple frequencies that matter. And in speech, the bottom two are the most important, but the third formant is also somewhat important for certain sounds. So if we just think about these bottom two formant frequencies, what you're doing when you go, I, you, is changing both of those formants around in a kind of two-dimensional space. So the lowest formant, the F1, changes, and F2, the second formant, also changes. So let me try and explain that intuitively. I'm not going to go into the details of the physics, but we'll start by using this little uh, deer grunt thing. So now what's good about this is it's very low frequency, and that makes the formants very clear. So I'll start off by showing you that as you change the length of the tube, it's going to change the formant frequency. So if I make the tube short, the formants will be high. And now as I elongate the tube, the formants will get lower and lower. So you could hear that. That's not the pitch. That's not the fundamental frequency that's changing. It's the formants, meaning that this tube is what's changing. All right, now let's try it with a more complicated shape. This is a plastic replica of an oo vowel, the vowel oo, um, and this is made from, we took an x-ray of a person making an oo vowel, and then we traced the sh shape of the vocal tract, and then we rebuilt that using a 3D printer. So this is hollow in the inside, and this corresponds to the air that would be in your vocal tract when you make an oo vowel, okay? So let's see here. So here we go. Here's what it sounds like without the vowel. Compare that to this. Or this. So you might say these don't sound very much like the vowels, and that's true because normally when we make a vowel, we actually move through a space of formants, and these things are just fixed. But nonetheless, I hope you can get the idea. It's the complex two-dimensional shape, or three-dimensional shape, of the vocal tract that controls the different vowels. And in particular, when I go E, I'm putting my tongue all the way forward so that I've got a very small space in the front and a big space in the back, whereas when I go ah, I'm actually opening the whole vocal tract, so you've got a bigger tube, and it's more open in the front and in the back. And that's the idea of formants and vowels.